Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Amber Lynn Rose, and this is episode one of my Stardew Valley Let's Play series. I'm really excited to start this series. Um, in addition to being my first episode, this is my first video as a YouTuber, so I hope you guys accept me. <laughs> I'm really excited for this adventure. Um, so, so far I've already gone ahead and chosen my character and filled in my farm name. Um, this farm is going to be the Cornerstone Farm, and I've decided to name it that because I want to take advantage of that Four Corners farm layout. It's definitely one of my favorites. And I've also decided to go ahead and make this, uh, multiplayer save, because I do have some friends that also have this game, so maybe throughout the life of this series, we might have some friends join us. We'll see. So, alright, um, let's go ahead and jump right into our farm. And I did opt to go ahead and skip the intro. Stardew Valley is one of my favorite games. Um, I have many save files trying the different farm layouts. I mean, how could you not? <laughs> so, alright. So our first day waking up in our farmhouse and we have this present here. So let's go ahead and open it. And of course we get our 15 parsnip seeds from Mayor Lewis to help get us started. So let's go ahead and check the journal. Okay, so there's our quest to plant and harvest those parsnips. And we have another quest here to go and meet the townsfolk. Alright, so we will work on both of those things. Um, as I was saying, Stardew Valley is a game that I have many save files. I really enjoy, um, and I love that you know, it's made completely by one developer on his own, and he continues to add new and exciting features to this game. So without further ado, let's get out to our farm and start cleaning up this mess. Okay, so let's start getting rid of some of this overgrown weeds and things. Uh-oh, there we go. We got stuck there for a second. Let's clear some So, if you are a beginner, pro tip, um, definitely hold your scythe whenever you are just walking around because not only does it not cost you any energy to swing, it will not kill your plants on accident, which I have done way too many times um, if you're holding like your pickaxe or your regular axe, you can accidentally kill your plants, <laughs> which is something you don't want to do, especially in the beginning because you don't have a lot of money yet. Um, so, pro tip, hold your scythe. <laughs> um, another thing is I always save my grass because I love to try and get animals before the end of the first year in the game, and so I, I let my grass grow through the whole in-game year so that I have enough to get me through the winter and I don't spend a fortune on hay my first winter. So that's something else. You'll see me ignore all of the grass. Try to keep it safe. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna keep clearing our farm um, and then we'll explore a little bit. I do wanna make sure that we collect enough wood so that we can get a chest going because we do not have nearly enough inventory at the beginning of this game. Let me collect some wood too. Okay, getting that. And I think I might chop down these trees at the front. I always find that it's easier to plant right outside of your house at the beginning. It just makes it easier for watering until you unlock sprinklers and things. Let's just keep clearing this area. I'm going right here. That one. Great. So, have enough for a chest yet? I think it takes 50 pieces of wood. I'm not even in the right place. 
That's not right. There we go. Forgot which button brings me there. So yes, we need 50 pieces of wood. So keep chopping down some trees. Get enough space to also plant our turnips. And take out two birds with one stone. said this is my first YouTube video so I'm really excited. Um, I hope to be able to grow this channel. Definitely enjoy playing Nintendo games. I'm currently playing Stardew Valley on the Switch here um, but this is a great game if you wanted to get it. It's on like so many other platforms. Um, I know it's on like consoles it's on pc so and it's it's really inexpensive as well which is great so if you don't have a switch but you still want to try stardew definitely do so because it's on so many platforms oh there we go we planted our seeds and i'm going to plant these other extra seeds we got too we fill up our area those extra seeds we got by using our scythe on the like tufts of weeds kind of looking things and so you can plant those you can actually save them and you can plant those in any season and you'll get like random crops for the season that they're grown in which is really cool So we do have enough now to make a chest. Oops, and I made a fence, okay. Now we can store all of this lovely stuff that we don't have enough space to carry around. Okay, great. Um, another thing we should make, we have some sap is let's make torches. As I said, this is a game that I do play often, and so I forget anytime I start a new save file how dark it is at the beginning. Um, as you play, there are mines in this game, and you can unlock a glow ring, which is something I always wear. Um, so it's like carrying a torch around with you wherever you go, and it's really great. So we'll just lay down some torches for our future self. Just to help us out. and we'll keep exploring our farm. So we are currently in the top right quadrant of our farm. So we have three other quadrants. I would like to um, kind of use each quadrant to lay out like a different piece of farming. So I'd like to have one quadrant dedicated, dedicated to our animals, um, another quadrant, probably this quadrant here dedicated to fishing ponds, um, then I know this quadrant over this way has a little rock quarry at the bottom. I'm trying to get to it so I can show you guys. He's walking our path. Okay, here's some stuff. So yeah, this quadrant has this really great walk, rock quarry at the bottom, um, and so I think this will be the perfect quadrant to put our slime hutch. And we found our first artifact. Okay. Oh yeah, um, that's another part that I'm really looking forward to is building up and decorating our farm. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I think in the opposite corner from the one we're currently in, I think that would be a great place to have some sheds so we can um, put like lightning poles so that we can get batteries, have some sheds, some storage up here. I think, I 
think that sounds like a really good plan for this layout. And uh, um, as I said in the beginning, I do have some friends that also have this game, so maybe in the series they, they can join us or at least have cabins on this farm as well. So I think that's another really cool element I did. Like I said, um, start this game with a multiplayer setup so you can do some co-op stuff, which will be a lot of fun too. Alright, so we're pretty much out of energy. Um, let's see who we can find in town. And then we'll probably go to bed. Always get all the wood. <laughs> Anytime starting a new farm is a little bit tedious in the beginning because you don't have all of your crutches that you do after you've played a while so we don't have any- oh I should clear my inventory what am I doing um like I said you don't have all of the things that kind of make it easier so once we get to mining um there's rings that help you pick up items faster and like I mentioned the glow ring so you can walk around at night time and be completely unaffected um, so while we're checking out town, we're also going to pick up these little forgeable items. I do plan on completing the community center in this save. We are anti Jojo Mart worshippers. <laughs> okay, Let's see who can we find in town? Start meeting. The town people. Rosemary, you. Okay. okay, so that was Mary, you. Here's Penny. I think some people are gonna be in the saloon here. Alright, so we can meet Pam. Shane's over there in the corner. And that's another thing I really love about this game is all of the characters have their own personality and they have what is called heart events. So that's something else that we'll work on a little bit more in depth in other episodes um, is like the friendship building aspect of the game. Um, and definitely showing you guys the different heart events that take place is a lot of fun. So look forward to that in some future episodes. Another beginner tip um, is check the trash cans at the beginning of the game. Um, you can get different food items. Uh, random, random stuff will come out of the trash can. Um, that you can get which is can be helpful in the beginning so definitely check your trash cans the only thing to try to avoid is if there is a townsperson nearby and they see you check the trash cans they will judge you and it can hurt your friendship so check out your own risk but i always try to check them because you can get cool stuff all right So it's pretty dark out now, so let's head back to our farm. Right now we're passing Marnie's. That's where you can get your animals. Half here goes back to our farm. So yeah, so you can tell how it kind of gets really dark. And so that's why I was wanted to lay out these torches earlier. So our house is nice and lit up. So we'll just clear our inventory so we're good to go for tomorrow. And we will get our first night's sleep. 
sleeping in this game, you always want to try to be in your bed before 2 a.m. because if you don't, you will pass out and you could lose things that are in your inventory. So, next morning and we have Clint welcoming us. He noticed that we were breaking some rocks and finding ore on the bottom of our Four Corners map. And so he's going to give us the recipe for a furnace. Great. So now we'll be able to smelt all kinds of metal and be able to craft more items. Right, so we have some new journal entries. So we have crafting a furnace and archaeology. So we need to take our artifact that we found yesterday to the museum to Gunther and start completing our museum collection. And we also got our letter from Willie. He owns the fish shop on the beach so that we can get a fishing rod. Fishing's a really great way, early game, to get some money quickly because your plants will take several days to grow. So if you can fish and sell those fish, that is easy cash at the beginning of the game. Also gonna fill up our watering can. So that's done for the next time. Okay. So let's go ahead. We're just gonna go right into town and we're gonna go see Willie. Get that fishing rod. There will be another cutscene that will happen that will take a little bit of time as well. We'll just get that out of the way. There we go. Hoy there, miss. Heard there was a newcomer in town. Good to finally meet ya. I'm still trying to unwind from a from a month out on the salty seas. It was a big haul. I sold a lot of good fish. Finally saved enough to buy me a new rod. Here, I want you to have my old fishing rod. It's important to me that the art of fishing stays alive, and hey, maybe you'll buy something from the shop once in a while. Right, and so that is our first fishing rod. We get Lily's old one. And his shop's back open, so we can go there we can eventually, when we have some more money, buy better fishing rods than the bamboo ones that will allow us to equip different hooks and bait, which will make fishing easier. Um, the fishing mini game, the first time I played this game, was so hard for me. So if you struggle with it, do not feel bad. <laughs> it does get easier. So you basically have to keep this green bar over top of the fish so that you get the larger bar to fill completely green and then that's how you end up catching the fish. Um, the more you do fishing, the bigger the bar that the fish has mm -hmm. to stay within gets. So that is how it does get easier. And there's also different cooking recipes that you can use to your advantage that give you plus fishing. So, 
It does take a little bit of time to figure out, but once you get it, definitely worth it. Like I said, fishing is one of the best ways to get easy cash in the beginning of the game. This playthrough, I'm not so much worried about cash at the beginning. Um, I'd more so like to save the fish so that we have everything we need for the community center. Just spend a little bit of time fishing. There's also um, different rare fish that you can get that are hidden in different parts of the ma uh, map that are called legendary fish, which are the most difficult to catch. So we'll have to work towards getting some of that as well. We can find a few more people to meet in town. So this is um, shows us our relationships with all of the villagers and shows us who we've met so far. So so far we know Mario, Penny, Pam, Gus, Emily, Shane, Robin's the carpenter who built our farmhouse and Lewis is the mayor. These two we would have met in that intro scene um, so that's why they're already unlocked and then Clint and Willie. So Clint is the blacksmith and Willie the fisherman. So let's see if we can find some of these other characters to meet them as well. Okay, and so we do have some worms, so let's go ahead and dig these up. So the worms can give you clay, like this one did. I got an artifact a moment ago. Okay, we're just gonna abandon because we're out of inventory space. Okay, so here's someone new. Hello! Alright, so this is Jazz. She is one of two of the children that NPCs that are in this game and Penny is actually their like school teacher I would pick that up but we're out of inventory space let's see anyone else out and about so here's Alex. He's like the town jock. Ooh, some gold. Okay. I'm gonna throw away one of these sardines for that. Or they're um, copper, not gold. But you guys know what I meant. And this is Haley. Arby should be his often. Arby's the town's doctor. Another part of the social aspect is you can um, marry one of the NPCs. You can even marry, in the multiplayer version, you can marry another, like, player. So we can definitely look into that um, and sort of go through dating each of the NPCs and then choose which one we would like to marry. Alright, and so here's Marnie. Jody. Caroline. Caroline's the one that's married to Pierre over there behind the counter. And this is Pierre's general store. So 
This is where you can come to buy seeds, get that inventory upgrade, which is extremely important. And then they do like little town. They have a workout group, like a church back here. Super cute. else might be out and about today. See if anyone is in their house. Okay, so here is Sam. He's Jody's son. He's one of our eligible bachelors. Let's see if Alex's grandparents are home. Okay, here's George. see about meeting Gunther while we're down. We do have one artifact on us. Our other one's in our chest. We'll have to bring that at another time. Okay, we also found Vincent here. He's Sam's brother, also Jody's son. So here's Gunther. Okay, so he's going to tell us about the museum. And of course, no one has donated, donated anything yet. So let's go ahead. We will donate our our first item to our museum. And so we got an update to our journal. And we got some money for donating. Oh! Does that count as meeting Gunther? Let's just stop. Gail's Pierre's daughter, Caroline's daughter. All right, and here's Demetrius. He is Robin's husband, Mary's father. He's like a scientist. Okay, and here's Linus. He's our homeless man up here in the woods. Alright, so let's go ahead. We're gonna go back 
to our farm and we'll clear a few more things since it's getting late and then we'll have our character go to bed and we'll probably call it a wrap for this very first episode. So let's clear some more stuff over here. Free up our land. Oh, it's not gonna let me pick anything up because our inventory is full. I'm telling you, the inventory at the beginning is way too small for anything that we obviously want to pick up because we, we need to get everything. I tend to just keep everything in the beginning because um, there's a lot of stuff that you pick up in the beginning that you sell that you end up needing very shortly after you've sold it or crafting different things and I just find it easier to just kind of keep it and wait to sell it till I'm through the first month, give or take. I'd rather just have the materials than have something present itself that I want to do and not be able to do it. found our first geode in this game. So we can take those to Clint. And he can break them open. Um, if it's a rare gem, we could donate it to Gunther um, or we can sell it. It's really cool. It'll help us complete our museum. don't find this boring. This is like the relaxing part of the game is the farming element. So hopefully me breaking stones isn't boring you too much. Let's see, do we have need yet? Okay, so we still need a good bit of copper. Well, we can make the furnace. Let's check our rock quarry really quick as well. Let's see if we have what we need. Not enough to get. We can clear some of the way so that new rocks spawn there. got eight copper from that and I think I have six in the chest so not quite enough yet at the beginning of our next episode hopefully find spawn okay so I have exhausted my player now we have to walk very very slowly back to our farm One of the really cool things when you're playing multi multiplayer and you actually have other people playing at the same time, um, the clock doesn't stop at all when you're in your menus and things. So one of the cool exploits that I do with my friends that also have this game when we play multiplayer um, and you run out of energy, you can actually go lay in your bed in your cabin and recover energy while your friends keep playing and so you, like you have the option to go to bed but you don't actually have to sleep you can recover energy so that's really useful all right so we're gonna get into bed okay so in our first episode we unlocked level one mining for breaking those stones Awesome, guys. 
Uh, like I said, I think I'm gonna cut it quits here for tonight. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode one. Um, I'm looking forward to making episode two and getting some feedback from you guys, hopefully. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.